Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. This week in the studio, I want to work on this fountain by filling in some of the shadow behind the flowers, the shadow behind the birds, and just getting that knocked out so that I can fill in the rest of the background color. And also maybe start on the border. And I've set up the basin cover of the fountain. And this is gonna be have a, a border on the bottom and maybe something uh, similar to the edge of the front of the fountain at the top and then just background color in between. So it has a lot of surface area though, so I need to get started on that. And I finished the front of this birdhouse. So I'm not going to do the back. So I just have the two sides that I wanna make similar to the front and the top, which is removable. Uh, and I wanna finish that so that I can grout this one. I'm gonna grout with black and grout Spring Fever 3 at the same time. And I have a short week this week because I'm going out of town, so I don't know how much I'll get finished. The light is coming from this direction, and so the shadow will be on this side of everything, including this bird. shard in my finger which I cannot see but I can certainly feel and so uh, the tip of the day is to try to get it with duct tape that's my first thing I always try to get it out if I can't see it duct tape is my go-to still in there I hate that I can feel it but not see it at this again so I'm standing on my stool uh, I'm holding on to the, the ceiling and I just got uh, some of that shadow in down here the shadow behind the dragonflies and some of that edging in so I do need to step back and take a look at it before I start back to work on it um, I think that the shadow is working uh, the one thing about shadow is not all of these things are the same distance from the fountain for, to create a shadow. And I sort of made the dragonflies and the birds the same distance. And so some of that variety as the, as the subject gets further away from the fountain, supposedly, then the shadow will become lighter and not so defined. It'll be more hazy. And so I think on the edge of this, I'll really kind of make some differences and and soften up that edge a little bit so that there's some transition between the darker shadow and the rest of the background which is going to be that light blue and i may even do that a little bit on the shadow of these dragonflies and i just wanted to show the transition between the side and the front 
I think it works. The background here is going to be the same glass, but I'm going to have it flow quite a bit more. So I really like how the geometry of this is repeated in the geometry of this, but yet this is way more subtle. It still has the pattern on it. It's still defined as an edge, and yet it's not going to take away from the design on the front of this. Now, when I get over here, there's going to be some tricky business where the flowers overlap the border and there's some shadow. So there'll be a lot more going on over on that side. So I haven't tackled that side yet. I think I'm going to work on the birdhouse and then I'll come back to this. <music> I'm going to spray the edges of this so that when I grow out with black, the edges will be black. new frit balls for a project that I'm working on and to start with I have got some fusible glass this is COE 96 and it's made by Spectrum and I'm just scoring it unevenly by hand because I want a variety of sizes and then when I nip it I'll be using my Brita nippers just to give my hand a break because there's a lot of nipping here working like a charm. It's great. So all I did was take a baggie. I taped it right here with scotch tape, taped it onto the other side with scotch tape, and then I can just feed the piece in there, nipping as I go. This really only works if you're making a big inventory of pieces that are very similar, which is what I'm doing here. And go pretty quick with it. pieces cut and ready to load into the kiln and I just wanted to show you what frit looks like you can buy frit this is used uh, for fusing and it comes in different sizes so f3 is the size it, uh, of pieces in there I think it comes f1 through f4 um, but I'm not going to use this I'm going to use my pieces because I want them to be I want the frit balls to be a little bit bigger and then if I have more room in the kiln I had already pre-cut these uh, from before, so I'll, I'll just use these, but I think that's going to be enough. There are multiple kilns here. This is the kiln that I will be using, and so there is a piece of kiln paper on the bottom of the kiln so that the glass doesn't stick to the kiln. When I load my pieces in, I just have to make sure that none of them are touching. So I have to do it by hand, and it takes a little bit of time to make sure that none of these little pieces are touching because they will just melt together. Now, it doesn't matter that they're square because what will happen is when they melt, the surface tension will make them ball up into the little fret balls.
it is. I got it all loaded. It's like a beautiful mosaic in there, except for the white crowd. Huh. Some of them I stacked just for fun, especially if they were bigger. Look at these, I'm gonna make a couple of eyeballs over here. Anyway, now I'm gonna run it. All right, the lid is closed. I've gotta put these little plugs in. Yeah. One here, one down there. And now all I have to do is hit that twice. Now it's on. I'm here with instructor Kelly Tame. She teaches the fused glass class, and none of this would be possible. These dots wouldn't be possible without Kelly. So thank you, Kelly. And, Kelly. Yes. and how long do they take to? Um, 24 fly? hours. Okay. And in the summer, a little bit longer because our cool off time takes a little longer because of the sun. So, okay. but 24 should be good. All right. Thanks a lot. In the hot box. <laughs> and the top and I got this far on that side but I can't really finish this until this side is dry I just finished it so I'm leaving to go out of town tomorrow so it looks like I won't finish this until I get back and also I won't be able to pick up those fruit balls until I get back that's all here's my project I'm bringing on vacation with me one type of glass one substrate glue tweezers I'm at Fire and Light Glass Studio in Otto, North Carolina, which is on the southern border of North Carolina in Georgia, near Georgia. And this is just a treasure trove of different things. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of what's in here. This shop is owned by John Phillips. He's a glass artist who's been making fused and stained glass work for years and teaching as well. In fact, he still teaches all levels from this location. So if you're in the mountains on vacation, you can sign up for class. And here is some of his work mixed with a little bit of student work. But let me show you what got me excited. Picking out class in person. There's nothing like it. And it's getting rarer and rarer to find a place where you can pick out your glass in person. Look at these hot colors. This is what I'm gonna be grabbing today. But the glass continues all around here. It's got fusible glass and stained glass and all of the things in between that you need to work with stained glass and fused glass and mosaics. He has got a really good selection. There's bevels, but look at this. Each drawer is just unique full of little bits and baubles and beads and fused things. Some vintage things. He's got all different fritz available and what's real nice is he's selling it in small quantities like this because maybe you don't want a whole big jar of it if you're doing glass fusing. John has got an entire section here of lamp parts for Tiffany style lamps. Pretty awesome selection. So I'm here with John Phillips. He's very old school. John, how long have you been here in business? 16 years now. Well, I say that it is worth a trip up here to Otto, North Carolina to check out his shop. There's a lot of treasures in here. Yep. Come see him. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.